Hi, in this video I'll be showing you the basics of building up Sharpalite dashboard pages. These pages allow you to create a number of tiles and each tile can contain various HTML content, for example a table or a chart or some sort of KPI. This example here we've got pages and then they're also organized into tabs. So what we'll do is we'll create a new dashboard from scratch. To do that, we need to go to the index page of the Sharpalite web channel. If you're not sure how to get to this URL address, you could start the service locally on your machine and click on this link here. If the service is already running for you, just find out the address. Once we get to this main landing page or the index page, you can see that there's a number of links across the top. The first link shows you all the published queries on this particular server. You can see there that I've got a number of queries that I've built up using Publisher and some of them are for the reduced view of the tile and some of them are for the expanded views of the tile. So the first step is of course to build up some of these reports in Publisher. Once we have some reports with content then we can go to the second link on that list which is the dashboard pages. So I'm going to click on that link and you can see that I already have a couple of examples uh, which you just saw in the previous screen. But what we're going to do is click on new to create a new dashboard page. Go OK to that. And we're allocated arbitrary code. So this screen here shows the page details. The first thing we're going to do is allocate the page a code and a group. These codes and groups are pretty important because later on if you display this page in a tabbed report you're going to have to refer to these codes and groups and if you change them it will break the links. So we'll give it a, a name, so I'll just say training and that's about all I need to do for the page properties. Let's switch over to the tile and I'd like to build up a report on vendors so I'll just give the tile a name, vendors. In this case the, the tile code is not important so we just change the title and down the bottom here we've got save. There we've, we have our first tile on the page. You see currently there's no content in the tile so that's where those published reports come in. So I'm just going to go back to the main index and click on published queries and you can see here that I have a number of published queries on purchases and sales and I'd like to get the top 10 vendors so I'll click on this report here and it has filters and these filters basically will move the dates as we go forward in time but there's the content I'd like to put into the tile. So just go up to the top and copy the URL address using a control C. You can close that page now and we'll go back to the tile that we were working on before. You can see that as I hover over the tile title there are a number of icons appear. One is the edit properties icon. So we'll click on that and we get back into this edit tile properties. You can see that we have a entry here for content URL. So that's where we'll paste in that address for the report. There's two content URLs. One's the uh, default content and you can also specify alternative content for the expanded view which we'll come back to shortly. So I'm just going to go save that and check out the tile and you can see that the tile is prompting us for the filter criteria before it displays the content of the table. I'd like to change that 
and just go straight to the table and bypass that, that prompting process. We'll go back in, edit the tile. You can see from the address here that Chapelite puts in the word report. Report basically prompts the user for filters and then goes to the next stage which might be a chart or a table or a pivot. What we can do is change the word report to table uppercase T. What this will do is tell Shoplite to bypass the filters and go straight to the table. Let's view the tile this time. Here we have the table with no filters. Right. Just going to resize that tile. Now what I'd like to do is create another tile just to the right and take this same content and display it as a chart. So I'll come back in, edit the tile, and down the bottom here we have new tile. I'll click on new tile and I'll put in the title vendors chart. Now I still have that URL address on the clipboard so I can paste that in and this time I'll replace the word report with chart. If you're curious as to what sort of options we have for URL addresses and the types of parameters you could always go to the help on the main index page and this will tell you all about the different types of reports that are available. You can see here I've been switching out the word report for table and chart and if we have a look at chart there's all sorts of options there to control whether you have legends, the height, etc. Let's come back to our tile and you can I've put change the word report for chart and I'll save that and the tile appears down the bottom here. What we'll do is we'll drag the tile and put it up the top here and just resize it a little bit. Don't be too concerned that the chart hasn't redrawn itself yet. If we just come back in because we've resized it we've got to save that new position so we'll hit save and the chart will re-render itself. It's chosen a pie chart because in Publisher we said by default we want a pie chart. So it's done that. But we could override that by just going back to that address and saying chart type, C type equals column, for example. And we'd get a different type of chart. Next step is to expand one of these tiles. I'm just going to click the expand button and you can see that it's showing us the same content. We want to override that behavior to show us uh, a more detailed view of the vendors. Now I have a report that I prepared earlier in this list and it's called uh, purchase order vendors. I'll just have a look at that report and you can see that it has a prompt area and it shows more vendors, um, as many vendors as it has and over on the right hand side we show the purchases with those vendors and if we click on one of the vendors it'll show the purchases just for that one vendor. That's the expanded view I'd like to use for this tile. Like before we copy the URL, don't need this report so I'm just going to close that we go back to the tile, edit the tile and paste in the URL address for the expanded URL and we go save. See now that we've got the reduced view and if I expand it now we'll switch to the second view which is the expanded view. So we're slowly building up this dashboard. Next thing I'd like to do is change the colors of the dashboard and just do some polishing. So let's go back in and if I go to the page I can, I've got some options here to change the page background or the default tile background. So I'd like to make the default tile background a grayish color. I'll just use one of these links to take me to a page where I can select different colors. So I'm just going to use this page to click on a gray 
I think a slightly darker grey would be fine. You can see it's built up a series of um, letters and numbers. Basically, there, that's the colour. You can always tell because they've got a hash key in front of them. I'm just going to copy that colour and come back to the dashboard and let's make that the default background colour for the tiles. So just paste that in there and now you can see they've got a grey background. Everything's looking awfully grey so I'd like to change the titles to have them a different colour, something a little bit more colourful. So that's the page. I'll just come back to the tile and for this tile each tile can have an individual title, background colour, tile, background, title. I'd like to put a nice fresh green colour in there. So I'll just select that and paste that in there. And now we have a green title up the top. There is a, another type of tile that we can do. And I'm just going to create another one fresh tile here. Uh, in this case, instead of putting sharp light content in there, I could put in a URL address for any website really. So in this case, I'm just putting in a website and let's have a look at that. As you can see it's put in a website. If I went to some websites like Google or YouTube, some of them don't allow you to mount their content in the tiles and occasionally you have even websites that jump out of the tiles. So I suggest that you, if you're going to put external content into these tiles, um, just try it out on a, on a test page first just to make sure that they, they're happy to reside inside a tile. I'm going to reuse this tile now and take out the URL address and show you another pattern. We can come down to the content. So instead of putting in URL addresses that point to a web page, which might be some sort of data entry form or, or a port or a chart, we can actually put in documents in here. So this is a document and we have a basic editor and we can copy and paste in content there. So I'll just uh, make that uh, bold and save and you can see there that we've got a little bit of a a document editor residing in the page. So I've built up a basic page. If we come back to the, the main list of pages and I just refresh that, you can see that the page has appeared with that group and code. And of course, if I click on it, it'll take us to the page. And if you want to mount that in another dashboard system you can copy the URL and give that to someone. If you ever do give them a page you don't need this user session ID up the top you can just strip that off and give them this address. That was a quick run through of how to create basic dashboard pages.